Welcome back. In this video, we are going to be finding the maximum and minimum values of a function, and we're going to go through it using this four-step process. So first, we are going to find all those stationary points. Then we're going to find those singular points. If there's any endpoints given to us, these are given. We're going to use those. And then once we have all these points, we're going to create a table and classify all of the points as either maximum, minimums, what type of max or min, or sometimes none of the above. This first example, we have our function f of t is 2t cubed minus 3t squared minus 12t plus 8. t is between negative 2 and 4, so another way to write that is a closed bounded interval from negative 2 to 4. And we are supposed to find the exact location of all the relative and absolute extrema. Now this is just a polynomial, so polynomials are always continuous and um, nice smooth curves, and so our function will have relative and absolute extrema because we are on a closed interval and we have a continuous function. So first we are going to find the stationary points. So the stationary points, remember those occur where f prime equals 0. So let's find our f prime function. So f prime of t is going to be, let's see, 2 times 3, that's 6t squared minus, that's going to be 6t minus 12, that gives us 0. And so we want 6t squared minus 6t minus 12 to equal 0. And I have this equation that I have to solve. The first thing I'm noticing is that each term has a 6 in it, so I'm going to divide out all those 6's. And I can do that because I have an equation. So now I'm left with t squared minus t minus 2 equals 0, and this is just a quadratic that's pretty easy to factor. So let's see, I have to have t and t, I have 1 plus and 1 minus because that's a minus, and it has to be 2 and 1, let's see, I want the 1 and 2, that'll give me my negative t. So I have stationary points at t equals negative 1 and t equals 2. Next, we're supposed to be looking for singular points, and singular points, these occur where f prime of x, or t, does not exist. And if we look at our f prime here, f prime of t is just that nice polynomial. Any number we plug in here gives us something nice. We don't have anything where we'd end up with a zero in the denominator or anything like that. So this um, tells us that there are no singular points. Okay, last is endpoints. Those are given to us, t equals negative 2 and t equals 4. So what I want to do is I want to build a table that has all these special spots in here. We have negative 1, we have 2, we have negative 2, and we have 4. And I want to um, find those y values. So first I'm going to put my function into my y equals. Okay, so here I have my function in my y1. I want to fill out this table, so I'm going to use the table feature. So first I'm going to make sure we're in the correct setup. So I'm going to go second window to get to my table setup, and I want it to be on ask mode, which it is. If yours is not on ask mode, down arrow to and highlight this ask and then press enter. It doesn't matter what these other two numbers are. Then we're going to press second graph to get to our table, and you're going to get something like this. You may have values already in your table, and if you do, so maybe you have some values in here already, if you do, all you do is you go to the value that you want to get rid of, and you press the delete button. Okay, so we want to put in negative 1, 2, negative 2, and 4. So now I can put those values in here into my, my table. So I have 15, negative 12, 4, and 40. 
Okay, now I'm ready to classify. So this negative 1, this was a stationary point, but I don't know if it was a max or a min, a relative max or a relative min. You know, I can maybe guess based on this, but it's really helpful to actually see the graph in order to help us decide what is what. So the next thing I do, once I've got my table filled in, I'm going to press window, and we're going to set our window. So we want the x min and x match max to match those values there. So I'm going to go from negative 2 up to 4 by 1. And we can kind of use these values here to decide what our window could be. So let's go from say negative 15 up to 40 and a good y scale would be 5. Okay, so here we have our graph. Now I have this um, drawn down here on my screen, so I'm going to scroll up so I can draw on it. So negative 1, 15, that is this point right here. And if I look at my graph, that's a high, but it's not the highest y value, so this is a relative max. And it's also a stationary point. So they might call it, we might call it a stationary max. Okay, next we have 2, negative 12. That's this point right here. This is a low spot, so it's a minimum. And if I look at my different y values here, this is our lowest of all that we have. So this is the absolute min. And it too is stationary. Next we have negative 2, 4, so that's this spot right here. That is a low spot on our curve, and so that is going to be a min, and it is a relative min. And it's not stationary, this is actually an endpoint. And then 4 and 40, that's up here, that is a high point on our curve, and in fact it's the highest of all the y values, so it's an absolute max, and again, it's an endpoint. So let's look at this second example. Again, we're supposed to find the location of all the relative and absolute extrema of h of x equals x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. This time we don't have a closed interval, we just have um, this the left hand side is closed but it goes on forever so we won't necessarily have an absolute max or an absolute min. So pause the video and see if you can go through the process of finding the stationary singular and endpoints and then fill out the x and y coordinates of this table. Good, you're back. So here I have my derivative. I set it equal to zero and I noticed that each term had a 4 in it so I divided by that 4. Notice each term also had an x in it, but I did not divide out that x because that x um, gives us one of our solutions, one of our stationary points. So it's okay to buy, divide by numbers, but don't buy, divide by variables here. Factor out an x squared, so we have x squared times x minus 3 equals 0. Solve, I get x equals 0, x equals 3. Those are my two stationary points. Singular points, there's none because this is a nice polynomial, its derivative is a nice polynomial, there's no values that are going to be um, illegal to plug in. And then the endpoints, we have that one endpoint of x equals negative 1. Now we're ready to fill in the y values. So let's go to our calculator. Here I've got my function in, I'm going to go to my table. I have other stuff in it so I'm going to delete that stuff and enter 0, 3, and negative 1. So those values here are 0, negative 27, and 5. Okay, now to classify them it's helpful to, to draw the graph. So I'm going to go to my window. I'm going to start. My x min is going to be negative 1. And it says infinity. I can't put x max equals infinity. Let's just go up to 10. 
an X scale of 1 is fine. And instead of using the Y values here, I want to use the zoom fit this time to show you something that can happen. So zoom and then go to scroll down to zoom fit. So it's going to draw the graph for us. And if you look here, I know there's interesting stuff going on in here because that's between 0 and um, 3, but I can't see that from my graph because my graph goes up really high. If I press window, I can see that the window that they chose for it, it goes from negative 26 up to 6,000. So that zoom fit is a good idea for a starting spot, but you almost always have to fix it. Let's go from negative 30, because our lowest y value here is negative 27, and then I don't want to go up to 6,000, that's like way too high. Let's just go up to 50. And let's go by tens. Now, notice that this graph here looks significantly different than that first one that we had, and that's because of the window settings. The window settings, settings can completely change how your function looks. It'll be the same function, but if different parts of it are emphasized, other parts will sort of disappear. Like this part in here sort of disappeared, and this part where our x values were really, our y values were really big, that became more prominent. So let's um, write down what our max and mins are. So 0, 0, that's this point right here. That doesn't turn out to be a high and it doesn't turn out to be a low. So this is a non-extrema stationary point. So non-extreme stationary point. Okay, 3, negative 27, that's this point right here. That turns out to be the absolute minimum, and it's a stationary negative 1, 5, that's this point over here, that's a high point on our curve. So that is um, a relative maximum, and it occurs at an endpoint. But we do not have any absolute max. So no absolute maximum. Remember what the extreme value theorem tells us? It tells us that if we have a closed interval, then we definitely have an absolute max and an absolute min as long as our curve is continuous. Well, here we do have an absolute min, but we don't have an absolute max. We have a continuous curve, and the reason why we don't have that absolute max is because we have it heads off towards infinity. We don't have that closed interval. So there's going to be another video that's got some different types of functions where there's singular points and some more interesting things going on, so check that one out.